Okay, so here we are at the beginning of the build. Um, this is processing the raw oak um, packs that we bought. So pretty much the same as each time, but it's always good to show um, the process. You can see what goes into it. Um, if you do have a smaller shop, and lots of people do, then you can obviously pay to have this processed down to dimension before you start your joinery. So you can see here in the background, Will is on the jointer. I'm going to do a little video, basic video for people who are not sure what the difference is with planing, jointing, thickness in. Um, but he's basically making this lumber square, so um, it may be slightly off square when it was cut on the bandsaw. So what we need to do is rough cut it. Then we need one reference surface, and from that reference surface, we'll be pushing that reference against the fence, not against the bottom and the bed. And then from then on, you usually lift it up if you've got an under over machine like a planer and a thicknesser. Or you can see here on the right, I'm just getting used to it, but I've got a planing sander. So sometimes to speed things up and going through the planing sander, I'm just still checking whether it's good enough for joinery or is it really just going to be for planing things off and finishing them when they're already square and done. So it's hard to get your head around quite how much material goes into making a solid oak window, which is why I'm showing this whole process. You can see there's loads of milling involved. Um, these have already obviously been pre-selected before they were milled um, by the sawmill, so the waste there would be again on an epic scale. Um, you can see me here, I'm laminating up for the lower seal. I didn't have anything quite deep enough. This is gonna be cut with a seven degree angle. And there you go, that's all the components ready for the joinery to make the oak mullion medieval style windows. So this is my little DIY jig for the sliding saw. This is gonna allow me to cut um, parallel and I'm gonna set the blade, I think at seven degrees here. Then I can use that seven degree setting to go over to the spindle molder to do all the rebating and stuff for that. one of my new favorite things in the shop I'm cutting a rebate here for the glazing and instead of doing it with a router or a spindle molder which generates a lot of sawdust and material and can tear out I'm doing it on the Altendorf I've set a couple of programs up I've done a video on this before I'm cutting like program one doing the first cut program two second cut and you'll see the little off cuts pops out every time from the memories is perfect So if you're wondering about the clamps, they're from Rui. Uh, they're pretty much universal. They work on my Altendorf and my Felder. I use them for all sorts of stuff, really handy. I will be putting a link in description.
I've actually stacked two multi heads here to get the height what I need. Um, not sure if that's exactly what they're intended for. You can see there's like a slither left between them, which I take off with a chisel, but it's all I had and it seems to work absolutely fine. So there was a lot of deliberation how to do the final kind of joinery here and I've opted for a floating tenon. Now there's no, there's a massive glue up surface with this uh, window rebate which is cut into all parts um, and this is the Sapili Domino, they're their outdoor external dominoes. You can make your own, I just didn't have the time. Um, now I could have gone with traditional mortise and tenon and done the step for the rebate but it's quite a lot more time consuming, it uses a lot more material, we calculated it on the oak and as I say these are from my workshop uh, this just was a really quick clean method and I really enjoy working this way kind of half with the mortise and the rebating and half with the domino at the end with this floating tenon
Okay, so I'm just taking a minute here to make a jig. This is gonna be to cut the uprights, which are offset kind of 90 degrees, so they appear um, on an angle. And they're gonna need a seven degree cut, obviously, for the bottom seals. So I need to be able to support them on the sliding saw. So we're fitting these kind of diagonal uprights um, with an oak peg. So again, a bit like a floating tenon. They're just a friction fit with a bit of glue and then a, an oak peg through. I've been asked about this drill press before. I've now added it to my Amazon store. It's a FAMAG drill press. It does work with a new Festool drill. Really handy if you need to drill dead straight deep holes. And it also has a stop. So one thing slightly different, on this style of window, the glazing's put in from the rear. So these are like the glazing strips, I'm just processing them through, but they are fitted on the inside. So unfortunately we did install these windows, me and Will, um, and glaze them ourselves, but the weather was horrendous on the day. We couldn't get any decent footage. I got some pictures of them finally in place at the end coming up. Thanks again for all your support. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.